This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Four Star Shout, FreeBets.com. Delighted to be joined at Repton today. We're in East London with Maurizio Salomon, right at the heart of, uh, I suppose, UK boxing. Um, how does it feel to be in the UK and to be here? Oh, it feels amazing. Uh, so much history behind these walls since 1894. So many champions have come out of this uh, gym, which is uh, an example of greatness. They are dedicated to take only kids uh, and build them an amateur uh, program or even without competition. They're just uh, so much pride because there's no business in this gym. There's no professional fighters, no uh, management of any sort. So it's just a passion of the trainers given to the kids is something very special. Absolutely, and you say that there, where in, inside of your business, of your business of boxing is very serious, a lot of politics in it, so is it good to sort of, when you come down to the amateur amateur clubs, it's all stripped down and they're in it because of the love of the sport, which is something that, is, there's a bit, there's something raw and nice about that as well. Yeah, this is what I really love and enjoy in boxing, to go to the heart and soul the grassroots of this of the sport to see these kids without a special uh, shine in their eye dreaming uh, looking at the walls looking at the champions that made it out and then uh, just building uh, day by day a, a dream to become true so it's the most beautiful experience to be at the gym and how important is it that the WBC um, obviously the charity as well we see Scott here and Michael that they do give back to, to, to the roots of boxing in a sense it's very important it's a very uh, top priority of the WBC to give back to boxing uh, we are a non-profit organization we're not a company uh, our, our financial uh, is limited, we collect sanctioned fees, but every single penny goes back to boxing one way or another. And to support amateur uh, programs, to support kids, to support former champions, to uh, build uh, bridges of peace and communication and sports, this is our only uh, reason to exist, is the boxer before, during and after the years of uh, glory in the ring. Absolutely, I suppose we did want to move on to some general boxing topics. Um, obviously your man, the WBC uh, world champion Tyson Fury, had a, it was scheduled to fight Alexander Usyk today. It would have been today, I'm sure you would have been in Riyadh. Um, unfortunately that wasn't the case, about two weeks uh, suffered a cut. Um, for yourself, very frustrating to, to hear that and to see the fight that we've wanted for so long get pushed back another three months. It's boxing, it happens and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a bigger fight even now. Uh, the frustration that both had to endure, so much sacrifice, so much patience, so much work put into it, and then one cut and everything is delayed. But uh, they're back in the gym. I spoke to Tyson uh, a couple of days ago. He's fine, he's ready to continue, and it's going to be an unbelievable, memorable, uh, one of the greatest events in the history of boxing, May 18. And this came with a lot of frustration from Team Usyk, especially Igis Klimas and uh, Alex Krasuk, um, sort of debating the cut and debating the legitimacy of the video and this and that. Why do you think that there was this sort of debate from Team Usyk um, when it came to that cut from Fury? It's, it's uh, only the heated uh, state of mind. And you have to understand there's so much emotions. The, so, so much is in the line. I mean, this is a fight that has been, has not taken place in 25 years. It's a fight that has been tried to build for the past five years with uh, making an undisputed heavyweight. Now that it's here, from one little moment, the snap and it's out. It is just uh, the heat of the moment, the emotions, but everything will be okay. And obviously with this fight getting pushed back, there is a rematch clause. Um, so obviously as a WBC uh, representative, happy for to sort of for, to sanction those both fights, even though with a delayed date as well? Absolutely. Uh, we made it very clear since the first moment that WBC uh, supports the undisputed fight and supports the rematch. Right? It's, uh, it's been voted and approved by the Board of Governors, so there's no issue. Why would we interfere into something that, that was part of making it happen? Absolutely. And another thing I did want to ask you, I did see that you were pushing for uh, Fury Usyk for uh, video replay. Um, just out of interest, how, how do you think that, that would work uh, with video replays in, in, a, in a boxing fight? 
No, the WBC has had instant replay for 12 years. Uh, we have a protocol, we have a clear process on how to do things. It is mostly intended for fight-ending uh, situations that are controversial. I was here uh, when Charlie Edwards fought with Martinez, and while the referee ruled one way, the giant screens on the arena, on the stadium, and the millions of people watching on television were looking at what had really happened. It, it is nonsense, it is unacceptable not to use technology to have uh, a fair result, a just result and avoid a controversy. So, with, so me using that as an example, whether it comes to a situation like Dubois and Usyk with a low blow, um, and say that could be, you know, a, a replay deemed that as a legal shot, does that then, would you then switch that to a win for Usyk, or for a win for Dubois, or would it be like a no contest in a way? I mean, it is, every situation is different. Uh, you think it's a low blow, I think it's not a low blow. The replay shows the, the glove landed on the shorts. Then the referee knows what instruction he gave. For the referee, it was not a low blow, I mean a, a legal blow. So that was a controversy that was created. But let's say it's, it's a punch and the referee's in a different angle and there's a big cut and he saw or he rules it a punch then it's a knockout win oh, okay. but if it's an elbow or a headbutt accidental you go to the scorecards it, it's just a matter of doing our best when the replay is completely giving you the right decision absolutely and just moving on um Canelo Alvarez next fight is uh, potentially in the rumors um drum uh, Old uh, brother of Jamel Charlo, Jamal Charlo, uh, is rumoured that that could be the fight. Um, if that is the case, obviously he's the middleweight champion in the WBC, hasn't defended his title in, I suppose, almost three years now. Um, would there be any urgency from WBC to sort of maybe give up the bell or, or urgency with Charlo to, to sort of come to a conclusion so that belt isn't, isn't held up? The Charlo uh, topic we have discussed at length throughout the years, uh, he fought back over the weight. Uh, we are, have been waiting to confirm what's his status. I talk to him regularly. As soon as they make a decision, then we can address the situation. And I suppose, sticking on the topics of Canelo, um, the WBC interim champion at Super Middleweight is David Benavidez. Um, a lot of people do want to see that fight. They see that as the next logical step from uh, Canelo Alvarez. So would there be any urgency to sort of put that mandatory on so Canelo does fight, end up sort of forcing through David Benavidez as, as Canelo's fight? Yeah, it's, it's very possible that Benavides uh, confirms his uh, status as mandatory in March. If Canelo has a fight for May, they, um, they are in the same company. They are already talking, they've been negotiating. Uh, we're leaving them to negotiate and we will see what happens for May and then the WBC can intervene. Absolutely. Mauricio, I just want to say thank you for taking time to speak to me. Good to catch up with you for the first time. I appreciate it and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in England, mate. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. So much. We need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.